Hello everyone, this is Jimmy Cultist back again with another Kaiju sculpting video. You will, I will have to apologize in advance for the uh, air conditioner, it's getting rather hot. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be an interference, but we don't do a ton of talking, mostly just work, so... These videos, you know, are more apt for that sort of thing. We'll go ahead and get the basic outline of his eyeballs. I tend to prefer a black sphere. Slightly stretched, not too much. We could adjust it later. Turn off luminoise and uh, color amount. Non collidable. Probably don't want it to be very physical either. There we go. I think the brows are a little squashed. They should probably be sticking out a bit more. We'll go ahead and add that since we've noticed the issue. Thicker. That's a little better. So, I think we'll tackle the crystals, because they are a fairly important aspect of Space Godzilla. Also his uh, feet, I have some thoughts about those, in terms of how they should be executed. Let's make them a little bit... Uh, Just have these little bridges. Crystals. Let's get to work on those. I am going to do something a little bit different. I don't know if Space Godzilla really has crystals on the sides of his arms. Is that a thing? It doesn't look like it. I'm looking at my reference and it doesn't appear to have that. Kind of 
of weird because it seems like a natural choice. We'll see if we can execute this very well. It's going to be difficult because of how tight the, uh, you know, formation is probably going to be. I guess we could make multiple smaller crystals and, like, lump them together, but that would be a little bit costly. You know, you'd have to copy them out and everything. The main reason why I'm adding this is because I did see someone's, uh, I don't know if it's official or what it is, but there was someone's Space Godzilla, it's like a sculpture, and it had the uh, crystals coming out of the arms, and it looks very interesting and I like it. I would give credit, but I had a hard time figuring out, you know, how to get that image again and who they were. It's like I went looking for it again and I couldn't find it. So you're just gonna have to take my word for it that it's a thing. Someone had the idea to give him crystals on the arms. And it's a good idea. I gotta admit, I don't believe, you know, definitely theft is wrong. And I would never steal anything. But sometimes I'm a little confused about theft as to why people care about it so much in terms of, like, intellectual properties, I guess. I mean, on the one hand, I can kind of see, like, People are like, well, that's money that should have gone to this person's pocket or something. That I understand, kind of, to a certain extent. But, like, if someone rips off your Godzilla design, you know, like, if somebody... I actually heard about this recently. Apparently someone on Dreams has been using my creations uncredited. Oh, the horror. I sure hope they know how to use the freeze tool. Otherwise they won't be able to remove my in-game credits, but yeah. Regardless. Although I don't like people necessarily using things without credit. Mainly just because I would like to have things spread around, you know? I'd kind of like people knowing who made the thing. Instead of being misinformed, but if someone ripped off my, you know, like say uh, I was already very well known for my Godzilla creations, which is not impossible, just unlikely. Let's say that that occurred. And someone like ripped off, you know, certain ideas of mine. I'm not even going to say rip off, I don't know, maybe that's a strong word. They used certain ideas of mine without actually giving me any credit. 
Which I always do, by the way. I am not a fan of uh, not giving credit. I'm talking about from a personal perspective of how I would feel if someone ripped me off, not the other way around. Like, you know, how would other people feel if I ripped them off? But if I was being ripped off, I don't know if I'd actually care. I would even go a step further where I'm not even entirely certain I care if they make money off of it. Because a lot of people are like, you don't care if you make money? It's like, well, if I was in my, you know, if I didn't make any money off of what I ever made, like if I made things for free, and then they were making money off of it, I might be a little, you know, like, how come I didn't get any money? That I would probably be upset about. Because, uh, frankly, money is just a uh, necessity for artists. you got to have money to live. I know there's a lot of kooks that think otherwise, but uh, if you want to do anything serious, and art is a serious business, it's not a hobby, it's not a flim-flam little thing. You can just, oh, I ain't going to get some little artwork or whatever. It's not like that. Good artists know it's a serious business, and making great art is hard work. You cannot take it lightly. And be like, oh, I just do it for a hobby. You're never going to make anything worthwhile that way. I mean, you could, technically, but you're limited with your tools. I guess if, if technology progressed enough, maybe that wouldn't be a problem. I'll take back my words when you could put together an entire game in seconds, you know, when that, when that becomes a reality, maybe then I'll change my mind. Let's lower the blend amount down a little bit. But I don't really care about making money. If I was absurdly famous, I don't think I'd really care if someone ripped me off. If I made a ton of money off of what I do already, and then someone, you know, bootlegs something of mine, I really wouldn't care that much. It's kind of like Disney. It's like, uh, it's like... They viciously guard Mickey Mouse. You know, if someone used Mickey Mouse in their, uh... Game or whatever, it's like... Really, there's no point in caring about it. The amount of... People know what the real Mickey Mouse is, and people care about the genuine intellectual property. They don't care about some bootleg version. They may, like, look at it as an oddity, and maybe a couple of people who don't know any better will be fooled, but... Ultimately, they're making pennies. Well, Disney would make millions. You know, it's... It's silly to be worried about such things for me. And you may have the question, it's like, well, why does Disney care and you don't? You know, I, you must be an idiot because a big smart company, you know, a big smart company doesn't see it that way and they're smart, they make lots of money. It's like, well, this is partially true. See, there is one perspective in which you would really care about whether someone rips you off and whether they make bootlegs. If you're a bootlegger. If you're a person who is not the genuine property and your version is inferior to the real, original property, you would be upset if people knocked you off and took your stuff because you're not the source. You're a copycat yourself. And this would probably explain why Disney doesn't like people using Mickey Mouse, because, frankly, they're just exploiters. They don't care about Mickey Mouse. They didn't create Mickey Mouse. They own him, and they use him to make money. They have no vision for Mickey Mouse. And, frankly, no vision for anything except making money. So, yeah. And if it's going to come down to legally sanctioned bootleggers versus illegal bootleggers, I'm not sure I really care that much. They can scrap all they want to. Mickey Mouse is still going to not be any better for it, you know? There's also the possibility, which is perhaps the thing companies would like the least, 
which is that the bootleg property would have more soul than whatever they make. If someone made a really good Mickey Mouse, it's like, oh my gosh, this is almost like something Walt Disney would make. And the actual Disney company is making, you know, garbage. This would be really bad for Disney. This would hurt their bottom line. So yeah, bootlegging they are not fans of. But yeah, if I was super rich, I don't think I really would care if someone knocked me off. Like, a, a good example is you see these things on YouTube, you know, like reviews of Godzilla or something. If I own the rights to Godzilla, I don't know how I would get the rights, like, to the entire property. But if I did and someone made a review, which I don't think I would mess around with that, I don't think I would care about that. Even if someone blatantly just stole footage from the film, you know, maybe they posted it to YouTube completely free, the entire film, you know, unedited, uh, the whole thing. I don't think I would bother striking it if I had already made my millions, you know, if, if I had already pushed it through the, the theater system and it had already made its money and I had already gotten what I wanted. I would cease to care after that point whether anybody else, you know, was leeching off the belly. Frankly, I think it's a net benefit to society for movies to become free, because not everybody is a uh, big-time spender, especially not in our current predicament, you know, with the economy and all that sort of stuff. So I think there's something to be said for making stuff more accessible to poor people who want to, you know, watch a movie. And there's plenty of old movies that really shouldn't be copyrighted, like they're so old and, you know, barely anybody watches them anyway and yet they still have copyrights on them. But you know, human greed, never to be underestimated, I suppose. That being said, I do still think it's uh, wrong to use people's properties without credit. I think it's good to have a healthy uh, regard and or respect with the people who created the property that you're using. Like, if someone makes a fan film of Star Wars, you know, and they credit George Lucas, I don't think it's a big deal, you know? I think, uh, I think they gave their due penance to Mr. Lucas. I don't think they need to pay for the copyright. Well, I think we've got our crystals in hand. Let's 
go ahead and uh, copy them over. Oh, real quick, though, before we do. Non collidable. Make sure that set a live clone. Could potentially use these crystals elsewhere too if we end up having to do that, you know. Like on the tail or something. Anyway, we'd better get to work on the back crystals. I think we can copy the big ones for this. Stretch this out a bit.
There we go. I think we finally got something that I can get behind. Yes, this should do nicely. Just some little uh, crystal formation. They will have to be uh, changed a little bit, though.
It's a little tricky getting these crystal formations exactly the way I want them, but we're getting there slowly but surely. Gonna try again. I'll keep those around just in case, but not quite satisfied.
Yeah, that's more like what I want. Those need to be smaller. That's pretty good, I'd say. Though I want a few crystals coming out over here. Maybe a couple of crystals on the neck. We'll see how that goes.
wonder if I should have any coming out of the legs. Let's see what we could do with that. Well, we may reconvene on this at a later date, but for now I'm going to go ahead and copy them over. Just in case I like it. Later. To kind of readjust these stubs a bit. Might want to go ahead and give him teeth. Very important. Group everything, and then add a bolt. Seems like a good bending point, good pivot. See if we can center this more or less precisely.
And I better leave that intact if I want to uh, do this properly. I'm gonna take a quick, quick look at what Space Godzilla's eyes look like. Turn down the soft blend just a little bit. I think the pupils need to be bigger. We have the right idea, I believe. If this uh, derpy look will probably be corrected.
Probably, no guarantees. He will also need lids. Most people need the ability to close their eyes. Even space monsters. I think the lid should be lower. It kind of looks like he's sleepy or high. Let's go ahead and uh, see if we can flip this. Practically doesn't need any changes. Take out a few extra rows of teeth, perhaps, but that's. Um yeah, this is probably going to get us a lot better. If we raised this up. That gets us some nice nasty tooth action for sure. And now let's go ahead and group the jaw and the teeth. I'd say we're pretty far along, actually. 
I think we got most of the details down. Almost ready for the paint job. We probably will be altering those back scales a little bit, but you know. I think for the most part, he could be ready for a paint job. At least uh, a basic paint job. Nothing too fancy. Yeah, slightly on the bluer side, I think. Yeah, that's pretty good, I think. Oh, and the teeth, of course. Making the teeth like crystal might be doing something interesting. We could do that later. For now, though, we're out of time, so we're just going to have to call it at this uh, juncture. Here are the names of all of our lovely cult supporters. Many thanks to all of you. If you'd like to get your name in those credits, check the link in the description and head over to our coffee. You can become a cultist neophyte to become credited at the end of our video, or you can become an acolyte to gain early access to videos in addition to credit. Now, if you aren't in the mood for membership, you can always leave a one-time tip. If you enjoyed this video and are not already subscribed, consider hitting the subscribe button down below. And maybe give us a quick like, both options are free. Also, don't forget to ring the notification bell so you will always be notified when new videos come out. If you have any thoughts, questions, or suggestions, leave them in the comment section. Or if you just want to let out your pent-up rage, give us some smack talk. Until next time, goodbye.